Get ready, get ready for this pipe and hot tea. Get ready, get ready for a tea time and filter with your girl loving tea. Spilling all this hot tea on this podcast street. So get ready, get ready for this pipe and hot tea. From tea time and filter with your girl loving tea. All right, tea sippers, welcome to another episode of Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely Tea. And I have my girl, Emily, in the house. Emily, say what's up to the people. Hey, everybody, what's up? <laughs> so, it is a lot going on here. It's a lot to get into, a lot of tea to spill. So, everybody is currently talking about this whole interview that Tamron Hall, that Tamron Hall did with Larsa Pippen. And people, some people are feeling like, you know, Tamron was being kind of disrespectful. You know, she was kind of prying too much. She was kind of talking down to Larsa. So we're going to go ahead and watch this interview, and then we're going to go ahead and talk about it. We're live. This is our first time meeting in person. But of course, I've seen the pictures and everything, and I'm so happy to have you on in your own words and your own feelings. Um, let's start off with the big one. Okay. <laughs> Marcus Jordan. Uh, the dating rumors started in September. At the time, you said you guys were just friends, and then it was revealed when you said on Valentine's Day that he was your forever Valentine. Are you guys in love? Um, I think so. We're, we're in a really good place. Yeah. How do you I describe like, it? I feel like a lot of people think that we've known each other our whole lives, which we have not. Well, he's 16 years younger, so that's yes. not possible. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. yeah. I feel like we, we literally just met at a party um, four years ago. Oh, really? And we were just friends. Because we, we all lived in Chicago. And yeah. When did you meet him? Four years ago. Four years at where? At a party. Then? At a party. I, like an L.A. party. Did you and know we, who he was at the time? Well, yeah. We, we have a lot of mutual friends. And so we're kind of in the same circle. So we've been around each other for like the last four years. So you're at a party and did someone introduce you? How did you connect? Yeah, we were um, at a party and they were like, oh, you know, Marcus, Marcus Jordan. And I was like, oh, hey. And so we became friends. We both kind of grew up from, you know, we're both from Chicago. Yeah, yeah. So I feel like we have a lot in common, like a lot of common ground, you know, like. Even with the age difference. And I don't say that. I don't yeah. want to say it flippantly because age difference, men get. Yeah. you know, able to date people 30 years younger in some cases without judgment. He's 16 years younger. Other than the bulls, like, what do you have in common? We have everything in common. Really? Well, I don't, I've dated guys that were a lot older than me. Scotty is 10 years older than me. Scotty's 10 years older than me. Yeah, you. so I don't really view age as, you know, you're mature, yeah. you're not yeah, immature. I, I don't, I, I don't feel like that determines if you're mature or not. Well, I, I feel think, like if you can go, if you can drink at 21, <laughs> yeah, you, can, you can go to war at 18. Like, you know, there's different circumstances that I feel like age doesn't really um, determine your level of maturity. I think the age for most people, if we're being honest, that's secondary. The bigger thing is where you are a beautiful woman. Thank you. And you could date anybody you wanted to. Date. Okay. Um, why would you date Michael Jordan's son, knowing that it's been pretty clear that Scottie Pippen and Michael Jordan didn't have this relationship people thought, and certainly don't have it now. Mm -hmm. Scottie has come out publicly and said that this documentary that was produced by Michael Jordan mm -hmm. uh, made him, he says, I was nothing more than a prop, his best teammate of all time. He called me. He couldn't have been more condescending if he tried. You know, that's, you know, I can't, I can't basically explain how someone else feels. That's how Scotty feels. He's, he has a right to the way he yeah, feels. Yeah. I personally don't really care about what, you know, other people, how he, you know, I feel like I live my truth. I'm happy. I feel like we get along. He's my best friend. And so Marcus I, is your best friend. Yeah, I feel like we have a lot in common. But as I was saying, friend. you could date anybody in the world. But Why you know, date Michael Jordan's it's, son? I, I didn't plan it like that. It wasn't like it was planned like that. I think we were just together a lot with our friends, and it just so happened. It wasn't like something I like planned. You got to remember, like I feel like for me being, you know, married to someone that was an athlete or whatever, it's really hard. You get scrutinized yeah. a lot. People don't think you should have a life once you get divorced. Yeah. They think you're once you're divorced, you're like done. And I feel like I've overcome so many different obstacles because I feel like I should have love. I should be able to date who I want. I should be able to like, you know, like live happy and go, you know, just go wherever I want to go and not be judged every time I'm seen with and someone. You should, you should. I'm curious because when you start dating someone. It's hard. Not, it is hard. It's also hard meeting their parents. Have you met 
Michael Jordan and Juanita Jordan, and what did they say about the relationship? You know, I don't really, I mean, of course, I recently have met, you know, I've recently been hanging out with them, um, but I don't really want to talk about them. I feel like it's not about, you know, my parents or his parents, they're all happy, our whole family's fine. I feel like it's more about like where I am, where he is. You know, I feel like we're in a great place. We motivate each other. We're really happy being together. And I feel like that's the most important thing. Well, I, I agree with that. I agree with that. Um, I, I, and I understand what you're saying because you are your own people. That said, he has a trophy store dedicated to his father. It's like a sneaker you posted, yeah, sneaker. <laughs> yeah. But you guys posted a picture with the number 23 behind you. There's only one number 23. Right. You know, um, God bless, he walks around with those great Jordan shoes, yeah. that's his dad on there. Mm -hmm. So he can't run from who he is. Right. And when I married my husband, he met my mom. My dad is in heaven, but he met my mom before we got into a full relationship. Mm -hmm. It's normal for people to ask, how did his mom respond? How did his They're dad fine, respond? everyone's fine. They're cool with it. Yeah, everyone. I think like, when you're an adult, I think your parents just wanna see you happy. You know, my parents want to see me happy. His parents want to see him happy. So you have their blessing. Yeah, I feel like we're great. Yeah, I feel like we've, you know, we've spent holidays together and it's good. We're in a great place. All right. So you guys just okay. watched that interview. She looks a lot like Kim Kardashian and Todd. Yes, like that's what too. I was thinking. And I was wondering the whole time, like, is she still kind of in the Kardashian clan? She got kicked out, didn't she? Yeah, they kicked her out because uh, supposedly she was trying to low key, you know, flirt with Kanye and. Oh, that's right. And Travis and all that. I forgot about that. Yeah. So what okay. did you think just watching this? What did you think about Tamron Hall's questions and this whole situation in general? I think Tamron Hall was very respectable. I think she mm -hmm. asked the questions that people want to know. Like that that's pretty obvious. Like, OK, you're dating a guy whose dad and your ex-husband are beefing. He's a lot younger than you. What do y'all have in common? And I, I wasn't, she said, okay, we're, we're both from the same city. And so we have a lot of common ground. I know like in interviews like that, she can't probably doesn't have time to just get in depth and give out like a whole list, but I don't know. I, I wonder what they really do have in common, but I don't think Tamron Hall was disrespectful in any type of way. I thought it was a good interview. Yeah, I thought Tamron did a great job. You guys, I'm a big fan of Tamron. I've met her a few times and she's like just the sweetest lady. And I think, you know, Tamron asks the questions that people want to know. That's part of why people love Wendy Williams, because instead of all these, you know, tap dancing, soft shoeing, you know, I'm scared mm -hmm. to like just ask this celebrity, they're real. Wendy would ask them what we were thinking. And that's why we all love Wendy. And even though Tamron, right. of course, is not Wendy, she comes off a bit more respectful, a bit more tactful. Yeah, but Wendy was messy. Questions. Oh, yeah, Wendy was very messy. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought Tamron was, like, very, very tactful in um, her yeah. questions. And you can tell, like, these were genuine questions that she was not only just asking for us out here in the real world, but for herself. She was curious. I don't know. I ain't trying to sound like a hater, but I don't think it's going to last. Maybe I'm being a hater. Maybe, you know, who knows? But I don't know how this relationship's going to last. It just, and, and I'm not saying that to be judgy. It just seems like her relationships don't last very long. That's true. And I know she's made it a point to say that nobody can fill Scottie Pippen's shoes. You know, after all, he did give her four kids and they did have a beautiful marriage once upon a time. But as good as Tamron Hall looks, they're about the same age. You know, Tamron, I believe, is like 52 years old. Tamara literally looks like she's 30 something. Oh, not yeah. Younger. I didn't know Tamara, she was 52. Yeah, she's she in her 50s. Good. Okay, yes, Tamara. Tamron Hall is beautiful. And even in real life, that's not just makeup and lighting. No, Tamron is gorgeous. Yeah. So Larsa is not in her 50s yet, but Larsa is 48. You know, so she's. she's yeah, that's not. Kid. That's about Marcus, the same age. Yeah, Marcus Jordan is 32 and Scottie Pippen is 57. So, you know. I feel mm -hmm. like this at the end of the day. Um, I think she's being pretty honest with her responses when she's saying that, you know, she does like him and, you know, they were running around in the same circle. Mm -hmm. But I find it hard to believe with Marcus Jordan being 32 years old and, you know, they're 16 years apart. I find it hard to believe that she didn't know him before four years ago. Yeah, I don't believe that either. I'm not buying that. Just for the fact that, Scotty and Michael Jordan have been teammates forever on the Chicago Bulls. Right. And 
you know, when she got with Scotty, I mean, granted, that was like later on in his career or whatever, but even before they had all the beef from Save the from the Last Dance um documentary, at some point, Michael Jordan's kids have to have come over to the house. Yeah, you know, you all hang like out. Her would go and hang out with Uncle Michael, quote unquote. So I just I don't believe this whole she had no idea, you know, she knew of him but didn't know him. Um, I think that's the part that's kind of weird. I I could care less about the age difference. People get stuck on that. Um, I feel like if an older man can date a younger girl, um, I see nothing wrong with it the opposite way. But I do feel like it is kind of weird because this was Scottie Pippen's teammate's son, you know, and Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen are not in a good place. Matter of fact, I mean, he's done several interviews stating how he really feels about the way Michael Jordan treated him. You have a lot of criticism about The Last Dance. I thought it was a great documentary. I felt like the documentary only told a story that sort of glorified him as a player and not glorified us as a team. You call Michael Jordan selfish in the first chapter. Why is that? I mean, uh, he was a great scorer, but a lot of things that he did uh, was based on uh, him as an individual. And I think basketball is a team game. I see, just watch that. So even after the documentary, I mean, Scotty still feels a way and I don't blame him because the way the documentary kind of played out, it's like everybody glorified and worshiped Michael and Michael was able to talk to the teammates crazy and all types of stuff. And Scotty was just mainly seen as like the wingman. So it is very strange to see that all of a sudden, out of all the people that she could have fallen in love with, it's Michael Jordan's son. And while I want to believe that her intentions may be pure, I still have the side eye her because this is the same woman who, remember, her marriage broke up because she cheated with rapper Future. Yeah. And, you know, I I don't, she gives me like she has low self-esteem because like Tamron Hall was saying, you're a beautiful woman. You can have anybody you want. And maybe, I don't know, maybe this is a flaw in my character, but I'm the type of person that, like, if I don't fool with you, then I don't, like, people that are close to me, I don't expect them to fool with you like that either. And so some people could say that's a flaw, whatever. You know, different circumstances are different. But if it's, like, you know, the the father of your kids, family, close friends, stuff like that. If I don't mess with someone, no, I don't expect for you to be cool with them either. So that is really awkward and weird. Like, girl, why would you even go there? Like, you're messing with a man's son that you know the father of all your kids is is beefing with. Like, that's kind of shady, and it gives me low self-esteem vibes. Yeah, I mean, I guess I can agree with the low self-esteem part, because remember, just a year and a half ago, um, she was sleeping with Malik uh, Beasley. And Malik mm-hmm. Beasley, he was married. He's an NBA player. He was married and she was creeping with him and the wife blasted her. Well, the part that was really embarrassing, if you guys don't know, um, Scottie Pippen Jr. is in the NBA. So that was the year that he was getting drafted into the NBA. And so instead of all the fanfare being on Scottie Pippen Jr., basically, you know, um, being a legacy for Scottie Pippen Sr., you know, to have a... a just a phenomenal basketball player's son in the NBA was a big deal. All of that got overshadowed because of his selfish mother, you know, sleeping with one of the NBA players who was half her age. Like, yeah, that's fucked up. Yeah. Malik is only a few years older than Scottie Pippen Jr. And I remember everybody was roasting him. And then I forgot what he said on Twitter, you know, but I just felt so bad for him. And so now to even add insult to injury, and this is why I feel like the NBA is like really, you know, the NBA and NFL are going for theatrics and drama. If you don't know, um, it was just reported a few weeks ago that Malik Beasley is not going to be playing is not going to be playing for the Los Angeles Lakers, which is a team that Scottie Pippen Jr. is on. So now the the guy who smashed my mom, um, we're going to be teammates. Who does that? Yeah, that's so messy. And you know, it, she. A lot of interviews I've seen and stuff like that, because it seems like a lot of people that she dates are typically and, I, you know, I could be wrong, but usually, you know, it makes the blogs and stuff like that. So the relationships we're privy to are all people that are somewhat, you know, known. They're not it's not like, you know, a CEO or a businessman or someone behind an engine, someone behind the scenes that isn't really like out in the limelight like that. It's mm-hmm. all people, you know, that we know. 
And she gives me like the vibes of the type of person that's always like my happiness, my happiness. Like it's always about her and her happiness when it doesn't really seem to matter about other people around her and who she's hurting because it's my happiness. And why aren't you happy for me? She gives me those type of vibes. Yeah. And I think at this point with her, you know, being the big age of 48, you know, soon to be 50 in a few years, um, at some point in time, it has to be about respect and boundaries. And I feel like she doesn't have any respect for Scottie Pippen Sr., her no. ex-husband in any sense. Um, she doesn't understand what's appropriate and not appropriate because even with Scotty aside, she doesn't even have a respect for her son, Scotty Jr., for sleeping with, you know, Malik in the NBA, knowing that your son is getting ready to be drafted. And you know, so those locker probably, rooms are probably off the chain. Oh, yeah. You know, they're roasting the <laughs> hell out of him. Yeah. I mean, I remember back in the day when they said that LeBron's mom was sleeping with Delonte West and that caused a bunch of drama, you know, um, in the NBA. But yeah, I just think that she just gives off really self-absorbed, inconsiderate vibes. Absolutely. And you know what she's doing. I'm not falling for the, oh, I'm innocent. You know, she can be what mm-hmm. he wants to be with. She's grown. He's grown. But I do believe that because of her turbulent relationship and the drama that she's gone through with Scotty and, you know, Marcus Jordan is not innocent in this at all either. You know, a lot of people are giving her all this flack as if she's robbing the cradle, but he is a 32 year old man. So he's grown. He understands that he's dating Scotty Pippen Jr., his father's teammate's ex-wife. So he knows what he's doing as well. And none of the Jordan kids were ever able to make into the NBA because they weren't good enough. So what if this is some type of get back? I may not have made it to the NBA, but I made it into your wife. <laughs> Damn, that's a that's messy. Ba- that that is so messy. Very <laughs> sick burn. Yo, what's up? Hey, tea sippers! To listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.